All right, so if you're using Google Sheets and you have a table of data like this, maybe you want to summarize the data and group it by certain values. There's one function that will do all of this for you. It's called the query function, and that's what we're going to go over right now. Between this and sheetshelp.com, you should be able to find everything that you need to learn how to use Google Sheets. All right, so the query function, the first argument that it has is data. So that's just asking, hey, where am I looking to do this query? So I'll take the mouse, I will click the left button, and I will drag it from A1 to D13. All right, so that's the table that we want to query. And the next argument is the actual query itself. So the first trick you need to surround it in quotes. So I did those so I don't forget. And we're going to go back inside of them. And the query is a combination of these clauses, all right? And they need to go in this order. And when you use them, you don't have to use any of them, but they have to go in this order. So we'll keep that in mind as we go through here. The first clause is select, and that's what you use to tell the SQL function what columns you want to return. So you can give it column letters. I could say select A. We'll just do that at first, show you what it does. And you can leave it at that, all right? So at this point, we're not doing any manipulation on this. All we're doing is just returning a column. The last argument is headers. It's optional, but we will tell it it has one header. So that's one of the advantages of the query function over something like sort or filter is that it can be aware of the header, all right? And it will keep it at the top. And if it's multiple lines, you can give this a one, a two, a three, and it will adjust accordingly. All right, so this is a one line header. We're going to hit enter. And the query function returned column A. Now there's some leftover formatting in here because I started with this query tab. So if you go to the website sheetshelp.com slash query, it's in the description, you'll be able to grab this template. And all of these examples will be done for you. And I picked up the underline from here. So we'll go back here format we'll clear all the formatting so we'll just go to format and literally do clear formatting all right so there would be nothing distracting on here and that's a simple query function right and it's only in cell f1 so if i left click in cell f2 and i look up at in the formula bar i didn't write wrench the function in f1 wrote that and if i try to change it it's going to give me an error in the original function. All right, so we'll undo that. And keep in mind when you use the query function, you kind of have to think of this as reserve space. It's all being driven by the formula itself. And it's not meant to be changed once you write the function. If you want it to be changed, you have to change the actual inputs to the query function. Let's say we want to return all of the columns. So we will change this to an asterisk, which means all. Hit enter, and that's our entire table. All right, so for our first example, what we want to end up doing, we'll go look at this, is we want to return all the values with the matching words. So in this case, it's north. So we're looking at this inventory. We want to see everything that's in the north warehouse. So we should expect to return one, two, three, four, five, six lines uh, with the addition of the header. So do select. And then if you look at these clauses, the second one is where, and that's conditions the rows must meet. So the condition is going to be, we'll say where, D, so that's column D, is equal to, and you usually surround the string with double quotes, but since you have to surround the entire query in double quotes, we need to use single quotes. We're gonna type north, end it with a single quote, and hit enter. All right, you see how fast that was. This instantly re modified the query and returned only the rows with a value of north. All right, so now we're going to show how you can use that same where clause, but bury some math into it. So we're not going to work with a string anymore. We're going to work with the, uh, let me hit escape so we can see it, the values in column B and column C, but we want to do totals. So we're interested in all of the places that have more than 140 items. All right, so that will be 11 cases, amount per case is 12, so 11 times 12, where that's less than 140. So let's go into this function and we'll say where B 
times C less than 140. I will hit enter and this should have returned everything where G times H is less than 140. So we can check that. We'll just hit an equal sign to the right here and we'll do G2 times H2. All right, we'll autofill that and you can see all these values are less than 140. It excluded, for example, uh, 10 times 18, which is 180. So we've combined the WHERE clause with some basic arithmetic inside of it and instantly returned this filter table. The problem with this table is you can't see the total quantity. It's not in the original source table, but you can add it as a label. So when you look at these clauses, there's one called label and it creates column labels, right? So we're, we'll go back into our SQL query. We will type label. I like to make them uppercase, but you don't have to. And what we want to label is B times C. And we'll make the label total. All right, but that didn't give me what I want yet because the select clause has to specify everything that you want to return. In this case, we want to return column A, B, and C. And we'll just replace D with this new value. So let's go back into select. Say we want to do A, B, C, and then, man, those error messages are horrible. B times C, hit enter. And there we go. So it put a new column in here. This data did not exist in the original column, but now it's part of this query output. So now what we can do, let's say we want to come back here. Let's add in the warehouse column again. So it's as simple as going back to the select, adding in column D and a comma and hitting enter. So you see the warehouse column pop back into here. And let's say we want to limit this to less than 140 total items and only for items in the North warehouse. We want to keep the where clause and we want to keep the less than 140, but then we will join this with the word and, and this would be column D equal to single quotes north. All right, we'll hit enter. And then we have this nice and tidy list, only less than 140 and north. So let's take a break right here. And I think we're finally crossing the threshold where the query function is becoming more simple than using some other available functions. So you could use the filter function on this original data, right? And you could only include items that said North here, but you can't do arithmetic inside of the filter function. So you'd have to add another column outside of the filter function and then that wouldn't belong to your table. But the query function has a self-contained table and it can all be controlled through F1. So while this is getting kind of long, it all makes logical sense as you read through it. You don't have to nest functions together. This is just all one function. All right, so we'll go to our next example right now. And let's say we want to return the top X results, right? So say the top five or the bottom five. So we'll go back to our table. We'll kind of reset things here. We'll just say return to asterisk, take everything else off. So this is our original table. And let's say we want to sort it by number of cases and return the top five. All right, so that one's pretty easy to do. The first thing that you want to do to sort it, you want to say order by. So if you look in the clauses here, it's the fifth one down and we will be ordering it by number of cases. And then we're going to limit it to top five. All right, there we go, nice and easy. So it did it uh, smallest to largest. If you want to change that order, you can go back in and the order by B, you can just specify that it should be descending. All right, so we've been doing a lot of sorting, filtering, right? Let's say we want to take the complexity up a notch and let's return some values that are aggregated. So what I mean here is that let's say we want to return the total number of cases by item. All right, so let's uh, write the query again. 
put double quotes. In this case, we just want to return column A, which is the item, and then the sum of column B. Okay, so for the second column, you're going to tell the query function return column B, but run the sum function on it first. And now we're going to introduce the group clause. So when you look in the lower left-hand corner, it's the third one down, and it's going to just literally tell the query what to group by. So we will say group. In this case, we want to group by item, so we'll say group by A. All right, close that off. Specify one header again, there we go. All right, now we'll come in and we'll do one last thing. So right now the sum of the cases is the header of the column, but what we could do is break out the cases by location and have each location fill out a column. All right, so that's similar to how a pivot table would operate in that clause is actually pivot. So when we look at the clauses here, it's the fourth one down. So we'll put that right after group. So we're still saying group by A, and now we will say pivot, and the locations are in D, so we will type a D. And so it instantly outputs what's really similar to a pivot table, All right, but you just do it with query function, it's nice and fast. There are simpler alternatives if you're only doing a very small part of the functionality. So one example of that would be the sort function, and we'll look at that next. If you like this video, please subscribe to Sheets Help, and you'll see a lot more just like it. Thanks for watching.